everyone to our talk concerning automation of flow chemistry. Uh, my name is Thomas Kretschmer and I'm a project engineer at Hightech Zang GmbH. And I'm talking today with Mark Oliver Piepenbrock. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Piepenbrock. I work for the company FL Mikrotechnik as a process chemist in the laboratories. And uh, let's uh, first of all switch to our next slide and then we can see a rough idea of what we are talking about. And we are going to today talk about the automation and uh, together with flow chemistry. What you can see here is a typical setup that you might have for your flow chemistry experiment. Uh, and in a continuous reactor, you have to control the flow rates of both pumps. You might be interested in the volume of your materials you still have available. And you also then have typically a mixing element followed by your actual reactor where you want to control the temperature and pressure. And maybe you're also interested in something to measure the quality at the outback, like the yield, or for example, you have a spectrometer connected at the end. And you might also be interested in the amount of product you've created. And this is a setup that really is, where automation is really useful because uh, if you want to control that all manually, that's rather tedious, where it's very simple to automate the whole setup. And you have additional um, benefits where you can also then use this automated setup to uh, for PID control and also to make lots of experiments in series simply by changing process parameters uh, automatically. And I think we can now switch to the next slide. And this is also where we start. We started or where our cooperation between Effort Microtechnic and Hightech Zhang really comes into play. Where Effort Microtechnic has uh, several different microreactors as well as a very useful modular setup where you can adjust uh, your reactor setup as needed. And this is then reflected in the um, Hightech Zhang automation software, which makes it very easy to create a visualization, but also control your setup and also then write additional programs to control it, or you'd say directly use uh, already created PID controllers, as well as interface your setup with your laboratory devices, be it balances, pumps, um, or other device devices. And for example, in the next slide, ah, uh, yeah, a small animation. <laughs> and, okay. and then on the next slide, you can see such a simple setup. What you see here is the setup which is behind me and which is also the setup which I presented this morning in a pitch video. And what you have here are two zero syringe pumps made by Hightech Zhang, um, which then pump food coloring through a um, air filled flow plate reactor. And you have additional modules for measuring the temperature and pressure at the, in the temperature at one of the inlets, pressure at the outlets. And you have a color sensor behind. And this setup then allows you to control the color values. Of course, this is a rather simple setup or a demo setup, but you can basically use the same interfaces and the same easy design to create uh, your own setup and also integrate your own devices, be it other sensors or spectrometers, other pumps or other laboratory devices. And uh, to see how that looks in practice, I think I can now give over to Mark for the next slide, where he presents some of the, uh, gives you an idea of the projects Airfield then automates with the high tech Zang automation software. Yes, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, we at Airfield, we um, make uh, micro reactors. And in my work, we conduct proof of concept studies and uh, the lab vision software and the lab manager from high tech Zang is we use very often for this because it's uh, very straightforward to integrate uh, sensors, pumps, uh, peripherals into, into the system. So um, to be fair, in, in, in many of the projects, we go, don't go for a full automation uh, because very often we don't really know how the system behaves. But uh, we noticed that more and more clients are very interested in uh, sensors, uh, online measuring, and also um, recipe controls and uh, um, automation. So uh, we 
be more and more go into this area. And uh, what I would like to show you in the next two projects is uh, a bit how, first of all, the air felt equipment can be expanded, but how the high-tech Tsang uh, lab vision and lab manager system can grow with this. So um, one project um, that we conduct uh, con conducted is this continuous lithiation, which lends itself very well for um, uh, flow chemistry and small uh, equipment because we it benefits from rapid mixing and rapid heat exchange. It is also very fast reaction. So you can see here a typical setup. So you first generate a, a lithiated salt of your starting material, you add an electrophile and you end up with a product. Um, in this particular project, um, we were actually already looking at a production scale, but on a, for a pharmaceutical uh, um, um, API or an intermediate. Um, so a small reactor was enough in principle for the throughput. Uh, still, there were some uh, issues with uh, salt formation and blocking of the reactor. So in, in order to decrease the downtime, we, we switched between two identical setups. So while one was producing, the other one was uh, rinsing. And so we could uh, use the uh, lab manager system in this way to, to guarantee a very smooth and, and, and short transition. So there was typically less than a minute downtime uh, during a switch of the reactors. So how this would look like um, in the lab vision, uh, as Thomas already presented, um, how this looks like. So you have um, your two parallel setups here, reactor one, reactor two. On the top, you have your um, starting materials and uh, your representations of your pumps and then your switch. You, so you can switch between one from one reactor to the other. And the same on the other side, you have your rinsing uh, uh, fluids. Um, here you can also see we don't only have just sensors here, but also pumps integrated. And I would like to uh, show you that in a, in a simulation with a bit of animation. Um, so I would like to switch now to um, another view. And so this is now our project, how it would run uh, in, in on, on on the screen level, this is a simulation. And as I said, we have, uh, typically we have uh, not a full automation, but we can create lots of little set pieces then we can later integrate into uh, automation concepts or start stop procedures, safety, safety concepts and on all those kind of things. So in this way, we, for example, can, um, connect all our valves here for changing to switch from one reactor to the other. I mean, uh, admittedly, this is a graphical representation, but behind this, there is a, a real valve that does the switching uh, because we also have our operators sitting in front of it. So there are some graphical gimmicks here that, that uh, um, allows you to, to monitor visually what's, what's going on. So let's say we now start our reaction by starting the pumps. And now get a representation here that the reaction is running in one of the reactors. I could now, for example, just for the sake of argument, switch on the rinsing on the other reactor. And so the operator can see um, what's, what's going on. And this is all usually for an experience you that this can be set up within one or two hours. Now, uh, if we want to add a bit of automation, I can I'll have a look, uh, programs running already. I just switch this on. So for the, uh, let's say we have one reactor running and we now experience in one of the reactor, in this reactor that's running the reaction, we experience an increase in the pressure, let's say up to six bar. You can already see there is some color coding so that gives the operator a wa warning. And if it goes above a certain uh, level, I get a warning here, overpressure. Um, and 
now I switch to the, the other reactor and my rinsing procedure starts in this reactor. So, um, and then I don't know, it's already done. So I, I, after certain while also the sampling will be waste it will change. So, so that there's, there's set pieces that you can test and try and then piece together in something, for example, that's something we won't go into uh, today, but uh, there is a, a, a platform called Easy Batch where you can piece together uh, your programs, your, um, your set pieces to create uh, uh, an automated flow or an automated procedure for this reactor. Um, and with that, I would like to switch back to the presentation. and tell you a bit about the second project that's um, becoming very important. We see that many companies are interested in intoxilation in continuous intoxilation. Um, and this slide here just shows you sort of like a, a, a basic schematic of what this means for, for us. I mean, we, we go to the customer side with our equipment, the things here marked in black as usually is what we carry with us. So we don't only have reactors, but also the pumps and everything. And then we need to integrate that into the infrastructure at the customer side. And etoxylation it, it here is um, um, yeah, very, uh, it's very crucial to take much care because the ethylene oxide is very hazardous. And so um, we, we need to integrate our system uh, into the safety concept at the client side. And uh, the next slide shows um, a project that we set up for something like this, which from the setup may not look that uh, uh, complex, but in terms of automation or of, 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 of uh, process control is one of the most complex projects that we had so far. Um, we have our reactor here, a bit extension of a residence time, and we have our feeds here of a feedstock and our ethylene oxide feed. The ethylene oxide feed in general is, is, is controlled by a pneumatically driven valve. So, and this is sort of crucial that no EO reaction can occur if there's anything wrong in the system that we don't really want to happen. So um, I will show you also how this looks like on a, a well, in, in real life. So I will switch to a different, to the different program. So this is the old project. I will uh, now switch to So just to give you a small idea, so our reactors in this case look a bit like this. This is this wasn't how it was set up in at the site, but this is like was a testing unit. But you have uh, our Miprova reactor, how it's called here, and then uh, other reactors here: heat exchangers, pressure sensors, pumps. They um, they can all fit on on this small space. And then again, you have here the graphical representation of of your setup. So in this case, we have lots of temperature uh, measuring points throughout the reactors and um, uh, pressure, pressure measurements. Here's our feedstock flow. Um, we have integrated something here because there wasn't time to install like a level measurement on, on the on the uh, on on the feedstock vessel. So we have some sort of estimation can program some sort of estimation for um, for the fill level. So when I start the pump, let's see what happens. Uh, When I start the feedstock pump, I start the program that should calculate now the feed level and it just does this according to the actual flow that it measures. Of course, in this case, it doesn't measure an actual flow 
Um, but let's see that. So now we get some sort of countdown. So we get an estimate of what's happening. And again, you can do some color coded warnings here. So when you reach a certain level, you get a color warning. That's one thing. Have a look. Okay, that's just just the editor telling me 15 minutes. So we're doing good. Um, and um, yeah, one thing that runs behind here is a, is a series of programs that basically give you warning when there's something wrong. So let's say I cannot go into details about the process conditions, but let's say we, when the reactor temperature goes below a certain temperature, I need to get a warning and switch off the ethylene oxide because that means there's not enough heat in the reactor that the reaction actually carries on. So I'll get unreacted ethylene oxide through. Um, when the temperature gets too high, I get warnings. When the, the feedstock flow is low, so the, you have all these small programs that you can run. I mean, this is how I set this up, but um, I'm just want to show you that there is little, again, little set pieces that you can test. And uh, so in this case, most of the things that are running in the background are there to prevent actually from pure ethylene oxide going unreacted through the reactor. Um, so one thing, if I were now to start the ethylene oxide, uh, let's set this back to zero. Um, I would get a warning that there is no flow on the feedstock line. So um, I need something to react with the ethylene oxide. In this case, to stop the warning, I will just override for the moment. Um, now I override the warnings, which of course you need to be careful with, but while this is active, I cannot switch on the, I cannot switch on the ethylene oxide. So there is a lot of things that you can sort of put behind this. And, and uh, so in, in this way, um, piece together a very complex automation in a relatively straightforward way. Um, in, in this case, for example, we also added some, some labels so we can identify our measuring points with the PNID and the labels are also color coded sort of green means everything's okay. Yellow means there is in this case, this is the, the working, the operating conditions that we are, have defined um, are, not re, are not met. And when you have a red, then there is a problem. The warning there's, there's usually, um, you also get an acoustic warning that there is something uh, not right. So um, I think that's what I would like to say to this. Um, I will go back to the presentation. And um, at Erfeld, because we're now having, we, we now looked more at the um, at the laboratory side of things, uh, the smaller setups, but uh, we at Airfield also um, more and more go into the area of pilot and production scale. So most of our reactors have some sort of equivalent on the pilot scale and can be then transferred to production scale. So what I'm showing here now is a scaled up version of the one reactor I showed you for the ethylene oxide, the Microva reactor. Um, uh, which still fits in the fume hood, um, but already uses structures that are later used in production scale. So the reason I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this is because it still fits in the laboratory. You can still use certain pumps that you can use for the spawner equipment. And as such, you can also use um, the high-tech Zang system to control and further test your strategies um, with this kind of system. So we can, we can already take it into the next step. We tend to call it validation because it's really sort of taking the results from the laboratory um, and sort of uh, transfer it to the next step. And once we are through the validation state in principle, we can then have already have the right structures, the right sizes of structures in place to then go to production. And, and we can also use 
um, the, the lab manager and the lab vision system to help us with this, uh, with this uh, at this stage. If there is time later, I can show you a small project on this, but I think I would like to uh, return now to Thomas to say some concluding words, and then we'll right. see what we do, how we're doing with time. Thank you. All right. Um, here on the next slide, you can see. A to wrap up, uh, you can see that uh, we have a process control and automation, which we create in high tech with Lab Vision, the high tech Sun software, which we can then use both in the laboratory as well as for larger scales together with the airfield uh, microactor systems. And that makes, and the benefit is, of course, that first of all, you can do early research, early experiments, do the validation if it actually works but then keeps the same automation and the same strategies you used, for example, for safety, then also for the larger scale reactors. And then, uh, as I've shown in the pitch video, it's also very easy to get started. If you have a modular effort microreactor set up and you use the library, which for uh, the microreactors in that vision, it's very quick uh, to create a first visualization. And then you can expand it as needed. And Hightech Tsang also, is uh, applicable to other setups. We, all, we also have, have several presentations and talks concerning batch reactors. So, and also the connection to different uh, devices. And there you really have an open flexible system where you can create the setup you need. And it's especially easy then with the effort modules and it, since we are working closely together. So I think on the next slide, I'm going, simply going to say thank you for your attention. And um, I, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Mr. Pickenbrock. And uh, free, of course, check out the other talks uh, on videos we have or look at our booth. All right, uh, that's our presentation so far. So now we have time for questions. Um, I'm looking separately in the chat here, but so far, um, if I don't see that we have any questions, but of course you can contact us at any time. Um, maybe one thing, since I have it in the background here, I was asked earlier in the pitch video, if this is actually a set, if this was a physical setup or the pitch video was showing the simulation. No, it was this setup and I have the lab vision software on a separate piece laptop in front of me, but just to give you an idea, I just started the pumps using the laptop, which you can clearly hear, but uh, now we are basically pumping liquid through our setup and um, as an, the same interface as you see in the pitch video, I is also used. Um, I'm also using here, so I also see directly the color values, the temperature and pressure, and so on. So I think now we have still five minutes. So Mark, if you want to, of course, you can show us the slides. I would check the chat again, but ah, okay. Um, I have a question here. Which catalyst was used in the intoxication setup? Uh, okay, <laughs> um, I'm I'm afraid I cannot give any details about the um, about the uh, process conditions. But if um, you're interested in conducting something with us, I'd be happy to get in contact with you. So um, I also had in the pitch video somebody who are also interested in catalysis. Okay. I think you have a separate reactor where you can use a solid catalyst in the channel. Yeah, that, that's correct. We have a cartridge reactor that you can fill um, with for mainly for hydrogenation. That's, that's the basic idea there. Um, but yes, for the for, for this particular process, uh, I, I, I cannot tell you what I, what I use. Uh, the same person, I'm not sure if he's in the chat, but it's kind of maybe an interesting question was also interested in whether, uh, how to deal with solids and reactors or gas liquid uh, reactions. And my brief reply was that solids are more difficult to handle, but for example, that uh, airfield has uh, specific mixes for that purpose and gas liquid is also possible. Uh, yes, in principle, uh, yeah, solids, as I mentioned, also for the lithiation um, is, uh, it's, it's always can can be tricky. I mean, in this case, you could use a rinse, rinsing procedure. Uh, 
otherwise we very much try to keep the solid content to to a minimum you, uh, like something like homogeneous catalysis has 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 uh, or we've we've conducted like let's say one weight percent suspension of catalysts uh, in channels that's something you could think about um but solids yes we have one mixer that produces or um, uh, intended for precipitation gas liquids um we also did uh with with gases you always need to be careful not to uh well what, what, what how you use your reactor volume um so usually you you go to um, a pressurized system to um, decrease the volume of the gas um but in, in, we have uh, we have conducted hydrogenations and ozonolysis uh, in our reactors, also oxidations um, with uh, pressurized air or oxygen. So um, those are things that are definitely possible uh, within within certain parameters. Okay, um, I have two additional and uh, two new questions. The first one. Um, is about plant scale installation. If you actually have an application, uh, or if you can name an application where you had a plant scale setup, um, I think that's probably something for the Meprova system, where you also have very large reactors. The plant scale, you mean? Uh, I, I would assume production. Um, the question is: Is there any plant scale installation in which application was relatively large? But of course, we can ask. You can contact us if you want to more details. Okay. But I, there are also larger airfield reactors yeah. when it comes to the high tech sun automation. Mm -hmm. it's, you have a very open and flexible system, um, mm -hmm. which is more designed for research or for applications where you still want to need to want to make changes, which makes it very easy for you to do. But you can also use our automation for larger setups. It's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. And I have one more question that's a follow up on the catalyst question. Um, but in general, can slurry be used as a feedstock, i.e. solid catalyst? Slurry is be used as a feedstock. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it, in principle, that is possible, but uh, only to very small, um, to very small uh, concentrations. As I said, perhaps one weight percent. And it also very much depends on... Um, on the type of the particles. If they're sticky, if they're hard and spherical, then you may be able to carry them through. But uh, it's um, it really depends, uh, like like <laughs> so much uh, in, in in chemistry or in this process. It depends on the reaction conditions. Uh, but we've used slurries, yes. All right. And um, that was that question, I think. I haven't got any new questions. Um, yeah, I think then um, that was pro mostly it. I think it's very interesting, of course, to check out then on the effort website to see all the different kinds of reactors, because I also got a question concerning what flow rate ranges are applicable, but you have, that depends on the different modules mm -hmm. where, we are, where you are very flexible in what you actually want to have. And well, um, this setup is probably one we're going to use as a demo here at High Tech Zang. But um, this, there, of course, it would be, um, but this was actually a very good example where I integrated the color sensor the first time into the uh, High Tech Zang automation system. So if you want to con add a new device, we can create device drivers for you. So uh, it's also very easy to expand the whole setup with additional laboratory equipment. Mm. Yeah, I would I would like to stress that point because we also get um, more and more requests of adding customs customer specific sensors. Uh, first of all, integrating it at our modules, but also then integrating it to lab vision. And and as Thomas said, we 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 can do that on the hardware side, but also on the software side. And uh, this is why the system is, 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 is uh, for us very, um, very convenient because it's open and you can really expand. It can grow with your process, uh, at least up until pilot scale, I would definitely say, but at least that's from, from Airfeld perspective, but um, High Tech Zang, as Thomas said, they can also go to larger scales and, and help you there. So um, yeah, I get, uh, what's that? One minute warning, so um, 
thank you very much uh, for, for listening, for your attention, and, and please get in touch with us, challenge us. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. uh, thank you very much <laughs> yeah uh thank you for for your attention thank you very much and, and hope to yeah. see you soon yeah and we um i'm going to look, keep looking at the chat for a while so you can definitely write us there or just